welcome to another episode on the North Vector Bassin channel. But before we get into that, I'd like to give a shout out to all the doctors, PAs, nurses, first responders, and the list goes on for being out there on the front lines and caring for those affected by this nation's ongoing pandemic, what my wife likes to call the Rona. Thank you. Thank you one and all. All right, let's get to it. This is the second in the series on this one-man inflatable fishing pontoon called the Roanoke. And today is about changing the way the trolling motor operates. Or better yet, how it uses the power it gets. All trolling motors are built to use the 12, 24, or 36 volt operation in the same way. Wastefully. Yeah, that's right. They waste a ton of available power because of the way they get the power. Now, normal operation is about magnetic acceptance. These DC brushless motors use resistance to determine how much power gets through based on your selection at the handle or the foot control. Now here's the kicker. Regardless of your selection, 100% of your battery's available power is already being sent to the motor. And you're like, wait, say what? That's correct. So they take all that power and resist it, which is then converted into heat, but thankfully your motor's in the water and help keeping it cool as you mill about the lake. So this normal operation, depending on your trolling motor and your battery, will net you maybe six, eight hours of total time on the water. Now, this is variable and not a one size fits all statement. They operate on an analog signal and duty cycle mentality, which works, but there's another way to feed them that is way more efficient, creates much less heat, and extends the life of your battery and your motor. That way is pulse width modulation. Think of it as sending analog signals digitally. That's where the pulse width modulator controller comes in. Now these controllers have been around for a long time but used mainly in the commercial and industrial world on a much larger scale. With the advent of the microprocessor and the shrink it down mentality these controllers are now available for these types of motors. These controllers are available just about anywhere and everywhere online in a wide range of power and control. Basically, you just find out what the power requirements of your trolling motor are, what it's fuse rated at, get you one of both, and there you go. Okay, so that's the skinny on it all. Just a little front end actionable intel on the whole thing. Now where it can get tricky is how you go about tracking that controller, fabricating a place to put and operate it, wiring it all together and hey let's not forget about the actual trolling motor that's going to require a little bit of reconfiguration to work with this new controller now 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 pump your brakes bubba it's not like that i know this all sounds a little intimidating but putting this all together and making it work is way easier than it sounds for reals and no there will not be a quiz or a test at the end all right so check it out enough of the front end deets Let's keep it moving and get into it. First things first, you're going to need some stuff. Easy enough to get and fairly inexpensive. But hold on, wait a minute. I feel those questions forming up in your minds, so let me just clear all of them by saying this. Your question is, why? Why should I do this or change that? My answer is, if you could double, maybe even triple your battery time on the water fishing, would you? Well, hell yes you would. Well, that is why a little investment like this is a must-have. Doesn't matter if it's for a kayak, pontoon, bass boat, or john boat. Okay, that's out of the way and we're moving. Now here's what I used. A 4 by 6 inch plastic electrical box for the housing of my PWM. My PWM I chose as a 60 amp unit. So I needed a 60 amp fuse and I chose the automatic reset type. So if I happen to overload it, and it trips, I wait a couple of minutes, and it resets itself easy peasy. The only other thing you're really going to need is some 10 gauge wire, and a way to connect it from the battery, and then to the motor. I use 10 gauge quick connect sections from Amazon. These provide a super easy and solid connection at both ends of the circuit. I just cut them in half, and used each section on one part of the circuit for the trolling motor wiring from and at the PDM. 
and then did the same thing using another 10 gauge quick connect section for the connection at the battery to feed the PWM. I've replaced the stock battery clamps for the trolling motor wiring ends with two copper closed end connectors because the battery I chose uses the 10 millimeter bolt tops instead of the standard lead posts. My battery is the VMAX V35-857. It's smaller and lighter at 23 pounds versus the 40 plus pound batteries and has the same amp hour rating as many of the big batteries out there. Okay, before we get too far ahead, we have to dig into the trolling motor. Like, literally dig into it. At least the top of it anyway. So here we go. I'm going to leave the handle so I can steer it manually for my setup on the pontoon. Some folks hook up crossing ropes and steer it with their seat or their chair or their feet and so on. But y'all can go look that up if you want. Keep it moving here though. Time to take off the head of the trolling motor. Okay, so here we are at the head. I went ahead and uh, undid all the screws to save some time. So when we remove the head, what we're really looking at here is basically yellow and white wire. This controls the forward and reverse directions. We're not going to need those. So we're going to tape those off and bundle them inside. So what they need to have is you find the handle and the switch, right? So again, positive in from the batteries, positive out, negative Positive and negative in from the batteries, positive and negative in for out for the motor and the direction. So we're uh, we're not really gonna even use this switch anymore. Okay, so we're just gonna do away with it all together. But we're gonna keep the handle, and this way it'll let me go ahead and control it like normal. So I'm gonna slip this back in there if I can. There we go. So that's in its regular position. At any rate, when the time comes, we'll just put the handle in. All right, so what we're going to need now, what I actually went ahead and did is that uh, the power leads coming in from the battery here, I went ahead and used some uh, tab connectors so that I can just insert them directly into these connectors that went into the switch. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and make those connections. So... They just snap in there. This guy just snaps in here. Alright, so just to be safe. Sorry for that. I'm going to crimp these guys down pretty good on those tab connectors. Just to make sure they're nice and tight and making good connection. Okay, let's try that again. And same over here, and same on this side. All right. All right. So, and that's basically all there is to it. You just tuck these guys back in there, like so, and like so. Again, we'll tape these guys off. You know what? Let's go ahead and do this now while we got these out. All right, here we go. All right. So, do a little electrical tape job on this. So they don't touch each other along the way and create any issues. So let me just tape these guys up real quick. Sorry for the lax in here, but I wanted to show you what I was doing and film it at the same time so that I could get that out of the way. Alright, here we go. Now we do the next one. Same deal. Just so we make sure that there's nothing touching. Can't get any short circuits. Doesn't have to fly the Atlantic. Just needs to cover it up, and make them secure. So those two are out of the way. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the yellow and the white. Just 
just a couple of little strips here. And the reason we're not using the all in the white is because the directional control will be handled at the PWM and no longer at the actual switch itself, which we're no longer using. So it will control the forward and reverse based on your selection at the PWM switch. So cover these guys up, make sure they're nice and, and tight as well. Ah, okay, now the key is to get these guys tucked away in there where they're not in the way of each other. May have to come up with a way to kind of keep that from, from turning in its in its position here. You know what? Alright, sorry about that. What I didn't realize is that this cap has on this particular model a center ring and inner ring that goes around the handle itself and locks it in play. So my tape was getting in the way. Now, without further ado, now that that tape has been removed, this thing should snap right back where it was to begin with all right which it does so go ahead and put the screws back in may have to go ahead and time lapse this so it's not uh not so boring all right here we go um i went ahead and put my nylon sleeving around all my 10 gauge cables uh, leading from the trolling motor back to the controller and from the battery up to uh, the, the, the PWM controller and so we've got our battery hooked up and uh, this is our controller right here and then the uh, wiring all the way back out to the trolling motor so we'll check the uh, propeller here to make sure it spins freely all right Looks like everything's set up and ready to go. So back at the controller, I'll choose the forward position on the switch and then uh, click the variable speed control dial to the on position and then uh, just give it a little bit of juice here to make sure we're working. Ah, there we go. Increase it a little bit. All right, and then we'll step around the front so you can see it. So, yep. And then now uh, let's see if we can speed it up just a little bit more. Well, there we go. Oh yeah, that's working. All right, so let's uh, maybe switch it into uh, reverse here real quick. There we go. And yep, in reverse. Looking good. All right, so as you can see, Everything works as uh, we had envisioned it and as we had configured it. So, all right, that'll do it for the demonstration. <laughs> I told you it was that easy. All it takes is a little time and prep to do. And as I promised, no quiz or test. Now, I'm working on a way to mount that controller box there on the right side and we'll probably just strap it around the pontoon bladder itself. Chances are I'll get to that on the next video in this short series when I add my seat extension, swivel seat, and that rear cargo rack from the Colorado XT I mentioned in the previous videos. Now, coming up this week is going to be my first fishing trip of the season with my son-in-law, Josh. He's got this little secret spot he wants to take me to, and I am stoked. You know, I should probably put that video up before the next pontoon mod one just for something different. What do you think? All right, that'll wrap this one up for today. I hope you found it both informative and entertaining. So please be sure to hit that like button if you did, and do subscribe to the channel for me. And if you want, click that bell icon to be notified when my next video drops. So, until the next time, you know what to do. Put a hook in it.